Aldo from Zero to Mastery here. In today's tutorial, we're diving into data types in Go. Now this isn't just any tutorial, it's part of Jason Lennon's complete Go programming bootcamp course available on Zero to Mastery. So if you want to learn Go from the ground up, click the link in the top right hand corner or check out the description below for the full course. Alright, that's it from me. Let me hand it over to Jason. Enjoy. In this video, we'll be talking about data types, including primitive types and type aliases. So first, let's cover exactly what a data type is. All data in programs consists of binary numbers, meaning 0 or 1. A data type is just a way that the program can interpret the binary numbers. Numbers, letters, and words are all different data types. Some examples of different data types are 15, the letter Y, and the word hello. Go is a statically typed language, so data types in Go must be provided by the programmer. Go uses a technique called type inference to determine what type of data it is working with. This means that data types only need to be provided in specific circumstances, and you can always specify the type if you want. If you do specify the type and you end up using the wrong one by accident, you'll get a compiler error. This is how the Go compiler is able to provide type safety. In Go, all primitive data types are numeric. This means that they're simply a stream of bytes. The type indicated in the code is simply a convention. It is possible that the data is invalid for the given type, but this only applies when you're working with user input or if you're manually manipulating the binary data itself. So for the most part, the type that's indicated in the code is the correct type. Let's cover a few different types that are available. First, we'll talk about signed integer types. A signed integer is just a number that is an integer, and it could be negative or positive. And here's a listing of the available integer types that are in Go, along with the ranges. We also have unsigned integer types. Unsigned integers are integers, but they're positive only, and they include zero. And here's a listing of the ranges for unsigned integers. At the bottom here, we have the uint ptr, which stands for unsigned integer pointer. That will be the pointer size on your current architecture. What that means on 64-bit systems is the uint ptr type will be a uint64. On 32-bit systems, it'll be a uint32, etc. Some other data types that are available are the float32, which is a 32-bit floating point number. Floating point numbers are just decimal points. We also have float64, which is a decimal point number with enhanced accuracy. We also have complex64 and complex128, which includes real and imaginary parts. And then we have a boolean, which is simply true or false. We can also make type aliases. What a type alias does is simply assign a new name to an existing type. This is useful to provide an indication of what kind of data is being utilized. Down here we have some examples of type aliases. We have the type keyword, along with the name that we want to provide as a type alias, and then the original type will be the third part of this statement. So here on the second line, we're creating a new type alias. We're calling it direction, and we're assigning it the byte type. For the third one, we have the speed alias, and that's going to be a float64. And you can have type aliases on top of type aliases. So on this last one, we create a new type alias, we name it velocity, and we set it to be the type of speed. And we know a speed is a float64, so here the velocity is actually a float64. The primary reason for doing this is to make your code easier to read. So instead of just having a function using float64, we can have the name velocity, so we know exactly what we're working with. We can also convert between different types using parentheses. So here we have two type aliases. One for user ID, which is an integer, and one named speed, which is a float64. If we wanted to create a new user ID, we just supply the name of the type, some parentheses, and then the underlying value that we can use. Since 5 is an integer, we'll be able to create a user ID. The same thing goes with speed. We have the word speed, parentheses, and then we have a floating point value within the parentheses, and that will create a new type of speed. Let's recap. A data type is a way to specify how data should be interpreted by Go. 
Go uses static typing, which is checked at compile time. The compiler uses a technique called type inference, which automatically determines which type to use. Type aliases can be created to give new names to existing types. And here we have an example of how to do it. We use the type keyword, followed by the name that we want, along with the underlying type. Converting between types requires parentheses. So if we want to convert an integer to a user ID, we just have the name user ID, parentheses, and then we have the number five as our integer. And that's a wrap on data types in Go. A huge thank you to Jason for guiding us through this tutorial. If you found this snippet helpful, imagine what you can learn in his complete Go programming bootcamp course, linked in the top right hand corner and in the description down below. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on future tutorials from Jason and other expert Zero to Mastery instructors. Alright, that's it from me. Keep on coding, and I'll see you in the next video.